welcome to Viewpoint on Ukraine Today, where we are joined by Jordanka Tomkova, a Swiss advisor to the Ukrainian government on the implementation of e-governance. Jordanka, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. So, Jordanka, e-governance will allow Ukrainian citizens and civil servants to conduct a number of services online. Mm -hmm. What will these services include? Mm -hmm. Well, there are several... Um, actually, uh, e-governance, per se, is a cross-sectoral strategy that enables um, the optimization uh, and uh, efficient and effective use of information communication technologies across the sector. Um, so these services, um, for the time being, are somewhat limited. There are about 20 that have been identified that are part of the also European uh, Union's um, e-service selection. Uh, but the services that optimally should be aimed for are across. So it's um, e-health, it will be also in um, uh, creating uh, facilities for business uh, licensing, to, to promote business licensing, uh, greater um, transparency, um, also in a uh, land cadastral survey. Um, you know, there's uh, new services, a series of services that have been starting to be implemented by the state agency for e-governance together with the land cadaster to make um, the land registration more transparent and also for um, applicants uh, for cadastral services to obtain um, licensing, zoning and uh, so this is another area. Um, and then it's also in e-education. So actually there's a spectrum of services and one of the most important areas, uh, particularly for citizens and that they are in high demand, is administrative services. So anything from getting uh, your uh, driving license more <laughs> effectively, that you don't have to stand in line, getting your passport uh, and so on. So... You spoke about transparency. Mm -hmm. So do you view e-governance as being one of the, the key tools for Ukraine to rid endemic corruption in the country? That's a very good question. Um, I think there is a lot to be still done. However, one of the first steps that Ukraine has taken and is in the process of uh, tackling is through e-procurement. You know, actually mm, creating a draft law. It's now in the in the pipelines. Uh, and also there is a new program called Prozoro uh, with the Ministry of Economic Development and Trade. Uh, and this system actually puts e-procurement contracting so online and makes it more transparent. I think this is a huge first step by Ukraine that it has taken. It just needs to be also pulled through and made scaled up to across the different ministries. Currently is with the Ministry of Economic Development and Trade, but it will need to happen across the different ministries in health, in education, in infrastructure, in um, and various other ministries. So that's number one. The other thing that is very important for transparency, again, cross-sectorally, as I mentioned earlier, e-governance is a cross-sectoral uh, strategy, kind of all-of-government approach. So it's not a single agency. All different uh, ministries and state agencies have to adopt this as a priority, which is putting information online, this could be also things like open budgets, so citizens can um, have 24-7 access to, to budgeting information of how the government is spending its resources, where it's allocating it. Um, so this is another transparency measure, and there are several initiatives taken on the open budget, both at national and local level. So citizens will actually be able to see where their tax is being spent? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, this is the idea. Good. So you spoke about um, citizens or administrative services being available to citizens. Mm -hmm. What um, percentage of, of Ukrainian citizens do you think have the, the literacy skills to be able to make use of e-governance? Mm -hmm. Now, this is a, a difficult question to answer, and there need to be greater analytics on the e-readiness. Uh, we conducted a survey, however, with the Kiev uh, International Institute of Sociology last February and March. And we did not look at, uh, look at specifically at the e-readiness, because it's a little bit of a complex you know, measure of various indicators coming into play. Uh, but if you look at internet penetration in Ukraine, so first you have to look at users. And it's uh, about 35 to 40 percent of internet uh, usage or penetration in, in Ukraine. Um, 
And then uh, when we looked at, when we asked uh, why is this so low, uh, citizens actually did say that um, uh, lack of skills and also um, infrastructure capacities and technical capacities are one of the, or two of the key obstacles why they are not using or optimizing use of uh, internet and information communication technologies. So definitely the skills factor is, is there. Percentage-wise, I don't have a figure, uh, figure for you, uh, but it certainly can improve in Ukraine. So would training sessions be hosted? Uh, I think these are also, uh, again, uh, there are many. As I uh, said, you know, you need to look at the e-skills, and it's a very, very important uh, issue, the human dimensional, the human capital issue. Uh, and this has to happen both at civil servants, so public servants have to be trained, and uh, the Swiss... Um, e-governance program that we are starting to implement, which will be running for four years, one of the key components in it will be on capacity development, both of civil servants uh, as well as, um, as civil society organizations, <clears throat> as well as citizens. So uh, concretely, uh, this can go as, as uh, detailed as how do you manage uh, s sort of new systems of e-document flow systems, uh, the front office and back office interconnection, um, also specific sort of s development, uh, software development issues um, that the Ukrainian government and different agencies will have to develop. Um, also then on the communication aspects, how to use also a civil uh, sort of uh, participatory uh, approaches to, to decision making. Um, this is one other aspect of government that's not touched. Uh, you know, usually it's about computers, infrastructure, but one of the key aspects of e-governance is also how do you better engage citizens in the decision-making processes. And here I think, especially in Ukraine, when you look at international rankings of Ukraine, Ukraine scores quite low. So this is a whole new area, uh, back to your questions about training, that civil servants especially will need to gain new skills on how do you actually interact with citizens in an online environment more effectively and efficiently. So to talk about infrastructure, does Ukraine currently have the, the technical infrastructure needed to implement e-governance or is this something which the government must spend money on in the coming months and years? Uh, here also, if you look at international rankings, um, Ukraine scores quite low. Uh, in the EU, on average, uh, countries, EU member states, spend about 2.2% of their GDP on uh, infrastructure uh, or IT infrastructure for public administrations alone. So this is a huge. In Ukraine, this figure is uh, yet unknown, but it's very low. And if you look at the budget allocation, let's say last year for e-governance, it was very low in general. Um, so infrastructure infrastructure definitely needs to uh, improve in Ukraine across the board from also wire, um, wireless broadband and ITU system as such. Okay, how will uh, e-governance affect voting in Ukraine? Uh, I think this is um, a yet in very, very, uh, let's say, input or, or beginning stages. It does not have e-voting system mm -hmm. as such. Uh, on the other hand, I know there are a lot of civil society organizations who are coming to the fore, um, who, are, let's say, uh, organized like Opora has an kind of online electoral uh, monitoring system before elections um, that is trying to make sort of uh, candidates, uh, also the monitoring of, let's say, um, uh, transactions or t transgressions, if you will, uh, in electoral monitoring, um, putting them online so that there is not abuse uh, in elections. Um, so this is a lot of transparency measures during the elec election period. Now, online campaigning, it will be very interesting. You know, in 2009, uh, the Obama campaign has really changed the agenda for electoral campaigning, where um, Obama has used internet very effectively uh, to do also crowdfunding and crowdsourcing 
of uh, citizens in its elections campaign. So it would be very interesting to see how the candidates in Ukraine will be using new technologies mm -hmm. uh, for their own benefit, but also for the benefit of reaching out to, to the citizens and the greater public. So, you know, there is kind of a multiple angles of it, of, of what can happen with uh, in the upcoming elections. So this is two things to watch. OK, fantastic, Jordanka. That is all we have time for. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, you're very welcome. You. It was a pleasure. You have been watching Viewpoint on Ukraine Today, where we have been joined by Jordanka Tomkova, a Swiss advisor to the Ukrainian government on the implementation of e-governance. Thank you for watching. <laughs>